Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. Today we are going to animate this helix in motion. This one here on the left is what I was reproducing. This is from a software called Cavalry. I'm doing an online course for that at the moment, which is where I saw this. And turns out there is a YouTube tutorial for it as well. So I'll put that link in the description if you want to check that out. I'll also put in a link to an After Effects tutorial that does something similar. Right, so we're going to have a look at how to do this in motion step by step. So let's jump into a new project and begin. Okay, so here we are in a new project. This is a 4K project. It is 3840 by 2160 and it is at 30 frames a second. We just have this background here to use later when we're all finished. For now we are just starting with this group. It has two shape layers in it. We have a rectangle, I've called that axis, and this circle. This rectangle has a width of 664 and a height of 10. And the circle just has a radius of 15. So the first step is to animate this rectangle layer. Come into properties, to scale, and we are going to set the natural scale to zero and then oscillate the scale with the oscillate behavior. So from our menu here we're going to come to parameter behavior and add oscillate and we'll set the speed to 30. Okay so our shape layer is oscillating there. If I turn on the gradient you can see that the layer is actually inverting. So it's animating from minus 100 scale to 100% scale. And we'll see why we make that choice later on in another step. Okay, that's step one done. I'll just turn off the gradient. And the next step then is to animate the circle. I will just turn off this shape layer for now and I'll grab the circle and drop it down to the center. Okay so to animate these circles we are going to replicate and then use the sequence replicator for the scaling animation. So I'm just going to rename this as source then with L on my keyboard I'm going to create a replicator we want it set to point, and from here I'm going to come to my behaviors to replicator and add sequence replicator. We are going to add scale, set the scale to 700, we want the spread at 100, and set the traversal, uh, set the loops to 5. And for this one, we want to set the sequencing to through. And this is our result. See how the ball becomes a bit blurry when we, when we are using a replicator? So in the replicator, we're going to turn that on, turn on the 3D to get a clean, clear shape layer back. Okay, so from here, I'm going to name this replicator A and duplicate it. Call this one B. Let's get rid of these copy tags. And in this one sequence replicator, we're going to change the sequencing to through inverted. So if I split them up now, we can see we have opposing animations running through the scale sequence. Let's just spread that one over there and this one over here and I will drop there, drop this one down to zero and turn on the axis layer and we start to see where we're heading with this. Okay, so the next step then is to synchronize the position animation of these circles with the oscillation of the line. And there are a couple of ways we can do that, and we'll have a look at both of those. 
The first method we will look at is to use oscillation on these replicator positions to synchronize up with the oscillation of the axis layer. So we're going to set them both to 0. And I'll start with A. I'll just turn B off for now. Grab the X position and add parameter behavior oscillate. We want to set the speed to 30. Set the amplitude to minus 332, which is half the shape layer's width of 664. So you see we've got one element following with the axis now. So let's turn on B, and I'm just going to drag, option drag this oscillate behavior to B, and change the phase to 3.2. Okay, so with this method we can synchronize the oscillation of the the replicator's X position while they're animating in tune with the axis layer here to create basically what's going to be the source layer for the replicator that we're going to make. Okay, but before we make our replicator, let's look at another method as well. For the next method, we're going to use the align to behavior instead of oscillating. So let's get rid of these oscillation behaviors and I'm going to grab A and just from the behaviors menu here find basic motion align to we're going to drag in the axis layer as the source and I might get these back to front um, but we're going to have this one attached to the axis wait 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 okay we want the center of A to the left of the axis. And then we're going to shift drag this align to behavior to B and change from left to right. And there's our result. So either way you want to go about it, I mean, you don't have to use any of these methods. You can, you could mask out the line, which is actually how I first started when I was doing this reproduction. I was masking out the line so that as, and I was attaching the masks to the balls. So when the balls crossed over, they hid and revealed the mask, uh, hid and revealed the line at the same time. Uh, as you see, I've found a better way to go about it. Uh, you could keyframe. You don't have to use sequence replicators. Uh, you could keyframe everything. You can do as you please, but this is the this is where you want to get to. This is our our replicator source, and that's going to be our next step: is to make our replicator from here. Just before we make our replicator, I forgot to come back to the choice of having this shape layer oscillate between minus 100 to 100 on the scale. So remember we are, the scale is inverting between minus 100 to 100 and the reason for that was because we were going to use the align to behavior. So with the align to behavior when you invert the scale of a shape whatever you've aligned to the edges will cross over to the other side uh, as opposed to using link to the edge. If you've seen my tutorials, you know that I prefer linking to the edge of a layer rather than align to for various reasons. But this is one of those cases where the align to is definitely the better choice. Right, let's get on with the replicator. So I'm going to grab this group, rename it as source, close it up. And the first thing we are going to do is clone this. And I'm going to rename I'm going to rename the clone layer as replicator source. And then with L on my keyboard, I'm going to replicate that. And I'm going to call this group up here the Helix group. Right, so let's rename this replicator as a helix as well. 
With our replicator from here, we want to set the shape to line. We want 10 points. Set your x start points to 0. And let's just set y at 900 and the end point at minus 900 for now so we can see what we're doing. And we'll turn off the source. From here, we can set up our replicator. I'm just going to come back to the first frame, so you'll see everything's going to start in this position. Because we have made a replicator out of a clone source, we will get the play frames options down here. So these are media frame settings. Uh, because a clone is a, a two-dimensional video projection of the source, we have these media controls. So two of them are important to us here. We have got the source start frame. So this will offset the starting position, and then the source frame offset will stagger that offset position across each, each point of the replicator. And I have to give a big thanks to Anatoly Kotlinski from one of the motion groups that I'm a member of. I had completely overlooked this in the beginning, and when I made my first versions of it, I actually had 10 line replicators uh, with opacity over point uh, to just isolate single ones and then had uh, different offsets set. But of course, with our source frame offset, that's not necessary. We can do it all from the, from the one replicator. I've worked out the best setting uh, to get the best look is a source start frame of 36 and a source frame offset of 24. That was just what got me as close as possible to the one that I was reproducing. And here's our result. Okay, so from here, the last step then is to colorize our replicator. In our replicator, we want to come to color mode and choose over pattern. All right, so if, uh, if you look in the project file that is available to download in the description, if you look in background, you'll see all the colors uh, ready for you if you want to use the same colors that we're using here. Okay, so uh, I always get a bit lost using color over pattern, to be honest. Uh, I'm just gonna use the steps uh, that I do normally to keep up with the changes, so First thing I'm going to do is set both of the default stoppers to constant. Okay, so the first point here will be this color, so I'm going to start with this one and work my way down. I'm just going to option drag on a stopper to bring another one out. There we go, and set that color, and we'll work our way through. If you find it, that a color doesn't appear in the right place, you just need to move your stopper. And that color. And then what it's like, the cream. Oh, we just did that one. So the next one is the minty color. And then the green. the yellow, and I've got to bring this one out, the blue. Okay, so there you go. We've animated this helix in motion. Really easy to do, and compared to the software that I'm currently training on, just as easy and just as quick to set up. Actually, I think uh, motion handles it uh, in a way that's just a bit quicker to do. Okay, thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope that you learned something useful, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.